Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I hope you are all are doing well today, considering the situation. Going out on your daily permitted walk, watching some Netflix. How are you all doing? Welcome back. Welcome to today's Chelsea News video, where I'm going to be talking about two things. One is a piece of news that's come out in the headlines this sort of last few hours or whatever. I do want to talk about that. But another thing is a bit more of a general question of another interesting story that's not directly related to Chelsea. Chelsea, but it could be moving forward. And that is the potential takeover of Newcastle United and what it could mean with heavy, heavy investment and potentially congestion at the very top echelons of the Premier League table. Good thing maybe for the competition in terms of contest, but maybe bad thing for Chelsea. And I want to talk about this headline putting a price tag on Andre Onana of Ajax, who's been heavily linked to Chelsea of late. I want to talk about that as well. Really, it boils down to the Kepa question. We need to all come to a decision of how we feel about this goalkeeper. Hmm. Flash facts for you guys, though. Did you know that the majority of you guys watching this channel aren't subscribed? That's right. You're not subscribed. Obviously some of you are subscribed, so thank you for that. But those of you who keep returning and watching the videos yet are not subscribed, hey man, do us a favor, why not sub? Hit the bell notifications icon, it helps out a lot, mate. And why not like the video as well? That's kind. Thank you very much, all right, let's get into it. All right, before we talk about the ramifications of Amanda Staveley's consortium's takeover of fat man Mike Ashley's Newcastle United and how they could let muscle their way in in buying better players, getting good coaches, and maybe winning titles. Let's talk about Andre Onana. That's right, the headlines this morning have linked him yet again to Chelsea Football Club. Goalkeepers, man. Goalkeepers, goalkeepers, goalkeepers. Dean Henderson, Nick Pope, Gianluigi Donnarumma, Andre Onana, and there is, there's more, there's definitely more. We know Frank Lampard was disappointed with Kepa, he dropped him for way more games than we thought he was going to drop him for. We all know that he wanted to bring in new goalkeeping staff, uh, goalkeeping coaching staff, goalkeeping staff. I suppose Kepper is goalkeeping staff, so maybe he does want to bring in new goalkeeping staff. So yeah, goalkeeping staff, he wants, yeah. <laughs> As things stand, we know Willy Caballero is out of contract, and although Frank Lampard, it was nice that he could rely on a 38-year-old to do a few bits and even play some Premier League games for him, he will want a replacement second goalkeeper, one that he can basically rely on, because we know Frank Lampard now, he's not going to play someone just because they cost a lot, or they're the number one, theoretically. Just like he drops Kepa, whoever is the number one at Chelsea, regardless of what time, he will drop for a number two. So for me, regardless, I think Chelsea are going to buy a goalkeeper when the summer transfer window opens, provided it does open as normal. Caballero will be released. I don't think it will be Jamie coming. I think Chelsea will get a second goalkeeper. So first things first, I think Chelsea are going to buy a goalkeeper regardless. Whether they'll spend £35 million on a goalkeeper to, to be in competition with another, I'm not so sure, but that's the headline today that Ajax have slapped the price tag of 35 million on Andre Nana for Chelsea. Obviously, Onana wouldn't want to be a second goalkeeper. He's the first goalkeeper for Ajax. He's very, very good indeed. He's young, promising, and highly rated. Obviously, very, very close friends of Hakim Ziyech, and that would be a nice story if they could both arrive at Chelsea together. But it poses a Difficult question. I think personally, if Chelsea buy Andre Onana, of course they want to replace Kepa. More on Kepa in just a moment. But then I still think they'd look to get another goalkeeper as well for a second goalkeeper. I think I genuinely think Frank Lampard wants a really decent level second goalkeeper so he can challenge or play in the cups. Or if the first goalkeeper's form drops off a cliff like Kepa's did this season, he can bring him in. So it's a weird one. Even though I'm adamant Chelsea are bringing in one goalkeeper, who knows? Maybe even two if he really doesn't want Kepa. So let's talk about Kepa Rita Balaga. Now, this is the thing, right? It's another one of those big debates around Chelsea Twitter, football Twitter, football media. I think a lot of people, certainly a lot of Chelsea fans, recognise that Kep is a very talented shot stopper, um, he's very agile, he's actually quite good at sweeping, and he's not a bad footballing goalkeeper. All the stuff that you generally want in a modern day goalkeeper, 
and I think he's a good age as well and a lot of Chelsea fans would be happy to keep him moving forward to nurture said talent and ability and it would feel bad to sell Aretha Balaga to another team and watch him become one of the world's best goalkeepers when Chelsea gave up on him. <sighs> but at the same time, would I feel, I mean I'm one of those people, okay, I'm one of those people that definitely think he's talented and see the value in him regardless, but at the same time, I kind of feel like if you said to me, right, you start next season with either Andre Onana in goal or Kepa in goal, I think Kepa's very, very talented, but for some reason, I do feel like I just feel like I'm in safer hands with Onana in goal. Now, I haven't watched Onana loads. I've watched him in the Champions League and a few Ajax games, but I rate, rate him very highly as a keeper. Maybe it's just because it's the sort of <laughs> almost non-recency bias, like you feel like a new person in goal will bring new things and you've got bad recent memories of poor goalkeeping stuff, you know, I know Kepa had a couple of good games at the end of the season, but so many games he had weak hands. I don't know, I've just got this instinct that I'd feel a little bit more comfortable for a campaign in front of me with Anana and goal over Kepa. But uh, do I think we should sell Kepa? I don't know, probably not. You'd make a massive loss on him and maybe he will become this beast. It's such a weird situation to be in, but I can kind of understand why Chelsea are looking at a new goalkeeper. Maybe Frank Lampard just says, look mate, I've had it with this guy, he put my whole season in jeopardy, I want a new goalkeeper please, Marina Granovskaya. Anana is half the price of Kepa, less than half the price, go for him please. But really I want to get you all guys opinions on this, where do you stand on Kepa? Would you feel safer with Anana in goal or are you happy for Kepa to just play Champions League, Premier League, everything moving forwards from now on? Let me know in the comment section below. Right, this is a bit of a weird topic with Newcastle United because obviously Everybody knows Newcastle are a massive team in English football. They're in many ways a sleeping giant. It was mental really they got relegated but well, I suppose not really because the owner, the current owner Mike Ashley doesn't put any finances in to build the club to the sort of glory they deserve. Maybe they should, you know, as a neutral football fan I'll be like yeah I'd like to see a mid table, mid upper table but it looks like f maybe because of what's going on in the world, but it looks like Mike Ashley's finally gonna sell the club and it's Amanda Stavely popping up again with a consortium and some money from the Middle East looking to take over. Now, I'm not gonna talk about the politics of this move and where the money's coming from and human rights and all that. You can go look at all that stuff online. I don't really wanna put my opinion on that even though it's not overly a positive one. Hashtag spoiler. Let's talk about the ramifications of a big financial takeover. First off, Newcastle would get lots of money. Now, that's fine. You know, again, I'm not gonna talk about where the money's come from. You know, whether it's like, oligarchs like Roman Abramovich buying Chelsea, although he is an individual, he's not a state with no human rights. Okay, I'm not gonna get into it, I'm not gonna get into it. Newcastle are a big club and it's not the worst thing in the world, they get money to sort of live up to their name and maybe buy some big players again. And that's the thing, man. If they do get the finances to sort of reflect what sounds like it could be coming, they're talking about linking like getting Max Allegri as the manager of Newcastle. I think Max Allegri would respect the size of Newcastle, he'd like the fan base, how, you know, the city is like a football city and all this kind of stuff. You know, in terms of like the romance of a big club and a good fan base, Newcastle are great for that, right? So Allegri could be attracted to that, provided there's the money to build a team. <laughs> and boy, would there be the money to build a team. So. Suddenly, what if Chelsea are no longer like battling Arsenal and United for players? What if Newcastle United come into the fold with elite superstar managers like Max Allegri at the helm? That really changes up the sort of complexion of the footballing landscape in the upper echelons of the Premier League. That's a lot of long words that I managed to put into one sentence. Suddenly, the top four that became a top six that was rapidly becoming a top eight with like Wolves and the gang coming to join the party in Sheffield and more really suddenly you can you can get the first and second place and throw a blanket over the next eight to ten it looks like newcastle could back themselves to muscle their way with financial backing into the top six into the top four suddenly it's not a given that you chelsea win a title every season you know whether whether that's a premier league or a cup or something it's not a given anymore do you know what i mean the only you have to be where liverpool are where City were these last two years. It's going to be a top two. I think it will go from a top six, top eight, and then just really be a top two. Top two and the rest. 
and Chelsea will get lost and washed up in the rest if they don't do a really significant rebuild of a good club philosophy, ethos, and a long-term plan, which hopefully they're doing with Frank Lampard. <sighs> we'll have to see. Anyway, it's a massive story in world football, and I wanted to talk to you guys about it, because, you know, who knows, on this channel in, like, a year's time, when we're covering football again, we could be talking about a massive six-pointer at the top of the table with Newcastle United. It could happen. So anyway, I want to also take a second to thank everyone who's hanging out with me on the daily live streams on FIFA 20 Chelsea career mode. It's so much fun. It's way better doing it live when I talk to you guys and you guys help me build the team. Uh, you know, give me tips and getting better at FIFA essentially. And just do all the finances and all the cool stuff with uh, Chelsea career mode. So if you want to come and hang out and join the daily streams, go subscribe to Jan's Yard. The link's in the top of the description every day at 6 p.m. Loads of fun, so go check it out. And also follow me on social media at Football Yannick on both Instagram and Twitter. That's it for me, ladies and gentlemen. Enjoy the football that is not going on at the moment, and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Body bag the verse, outline the chuck. In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I love me,